Bacon is launching us into a new world. It's a world of scientific technology, and it's a world for which we must, in large part, be grateful. It is a world that gives us medicine. It gives us iPhones and laptop computers and uh, the prosperity that we have. But it's also a world that gives us great anxiety about our place in the world, about the meaning of the world, about the ground of our moral judgments. We might call Bacon the father of modern science, but Bacon never made any distinct philosophical or scientific discoveries. In fact, what Bacon offers is a new picture of the world, a new way of seeing things. He offers a program for study, and that's one of the reasons we're going to read him, is to see him not so much as a scientist, but largely for his the imaginative program and vision he gives to philosophy and the philosophical enterprise. What is characteristic of modern philosophy? What makes it different from medieval or ancient philosophy? The first thing is a severe criticism of the previous tradition. Not just this thinker or that thinker or this argument or that argument. What I'm talking about is a whole scale repudiation of the entire pre-existing order of knowledge and inquiry. And Bacon is very explicit about this. For let a man look carefully into all the variety of books with which the arts and sciences abound, he will find everywhere endless repetitions of the same thing, varying in the method of treatment, but not new in substance. And it, so much that the whole stock, numerous as it appears at first view, proves on examination to be but scanty. And for its value and utility, it must be plainly avowed that the wisdom which we have derived principally from the Greeks is but like the boyhood of knowledge and has the characteristic property of boys. It can talk, but it cannot generate. See the style. For it is fruitful of controversies, but barren of works. Number two, then. Bacon suggests because that whole tradition is sterile and barren of works and disputatious and uh, unproductive, therefore, we need a new foundation. Bacon tells us that the goal of this new foundation is not to understand nature, but to command nature. That's a very important point. We've already read that Bacon says the goal is generation, fruit, works, not understanding, but production. This is why Bacon is sometimes called the father of modern science, because he wants to give us a way of knowing how to dominate and control nature for the assistance of human beings. So Bacon is at the front end of what today we call scientific technology using science to promote technology. Finally, fourth, the fourth element in modern philosophy that we find in the Great Instauration is uh, Bacon's promoting uh, of a new way of knowing. Uh, Bacon is focused on human knowledge. He's focused on the way in which humans know the world. And Bacon begins the Great Instauration by telling us that our knowing powers have been so corrupted by various things that he thinks we need a new foundation and he wonders if information of the senses, he tells us, is faulty. Look at two railroad tracks extending into the distance. It looks like the sides converge to a point. Our senses tell us that the tracks get closer and closer together, but they don't. Submerge a stick in water. The stick looks bent, but it isn't. 
Bacon is profoundly convicted by the idea that our senses falsify reality. And you need to let this sink in for a moment, that challenge. We spontaneously say sometimes, perhaps, it's obvious, it's as obvious as the fact that grass is green. But for the philosophers after Bacon, the question arises, is grass green? And in fact, what the science tells us after Bacon is that the greenness in the grass is not in the grass. The greenness in the grass is really wavelengths of light that can be measured by a spectrometer. The perception of greenness is purely in us, in the way our, co our, our rods and cones and the pigmentation in our eyes translates the wavelengths of light into a visual experience that we have in our minds. Wow. What does this mean? It means that the whole world of our sense that we use to mark the meaningfulness of our reality is significantly undermined. Bacon begins the epistemological turn in modern philosophy. He introduces critical philosophy. And as we saw in the lecture, that involves criticizing our senses and the ability for our senses to reliably tell us about reality. That critique is going to continue in the subsequent philosophers that we read. And it will become increasingly aggressive in its undermining our ability to rely on the senses. And arguably it reaches its end in Nietzsche, who sees that that critique of the senses is ultimately self-defeating. And it leaves us then with the question of whether that challenging of sensory knowledge was correct in the first place. It is true that our senses vary with perspective, that different shades of light can make things look differently, that we can look at things at a distance and close up and see them at different sizes. But notice that we can only know that our senses fail by other senses. When you want to correct a false view, you take the stick out of the water and notice it's straight. You follow the railroad tracks down and notice that they do not converge in the distance. And it may be that our senses are our only real contact with reality.